you know, it's it kind of it's interesting. You worked on Homeland. So much of this feels like, in some ways, an espionage thriller because Hawk and Tim are going to great lengths to cover their tracks and to hide from everyone around them. Uh, talk a little bit about that. A bit. It, it's it's the the ways in which they you show them having to really hide who they are at the same time that they're trying to explore a relationship, which of course I think was not unique. I think anybody who was in a, in a closet relationship like that then probably experienced. Sure, you know, uh, Mr. Mallon's novel sent me into a lot of research, particularly about the Lavender Scare. And you know, I, uh, one of the things I read and learned about was that Washington in the 50s was basically the center of the world. You know, the United States was tasked with its allies with rebuilding Europe. And that, and you went, if you were young and you wanted to make a difference, you went to Washington, D.C. And, you know, people were coming off the farm and out of their small towns and they were being liberated in Washington, D.C., straight or gay. They were having relationships that they wouldn't have had back home. And one of the things that happened if you were uh, gay uh, was um, that it would be suggested that you immediately pair up with a gay person of the opposite, opposite sex. So a gay man arrives, someone would say, I'm going to introduce you to my friend, Mary. You know, she's a lesbian, the two of you should be out in the town, you should go dating, you should always be together. You should never, ever be out with just you and a guy having dinner in a restaurant. That should never happen. So you're paired off. And there's a funny story about actually a dinner party where this woman was having, where the same sex couples were like in the privacy of her home around the dinner table, and her mother came to the door. And by the time she walked her mother from the front door to the dining room, they'd all switched. So they were sitting next to their opposite gender partner. Right. And, you know, that kind of, and we're laughing about that because it sounds comical now. But, you know, living, you know, it created a kind of an adventure to have. But once uh, the uh, investigations began and what people will see in the series is this show is meticulously researched. So when you see the FBI raiding someone's apartment and questioning two women who live together, going through their underwear drawers, that everything in that scene is from a transcript. Uh, you, there's a polygraph uh, scene. Everything from that is from the record. Uh, everything that uh, everything that McCarthy and Cohen say in public in our show, they actually said in 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 public. What you know, obviously we we imagine what might have gone on behind the scenes. So that we, I wanted the show to be this meticulously researched part of LGBTQ history of a time of incredible persecution. I mean, it wasn't a subtle, there was nothing subtle about it. President Eisenhower signed an executive order saying sexual deviants cannot work in the federal government. And people who came to Washington with the hope of building these careers and changing the world, their lives were destroyed. At one point, somebody from the M unit said, we're experiencing, the M unit was a State Department's investigative tool investigating alleged homosexuals. We're seeing one suicide a week. Mm 